Today in the nation's capital, anticipation and celebration, U.S. Soccer Centennial brings together legends of this game as the men's national team faces a critical stretch of World Cup qualifying. Major questions about its back line after a shaky loss to a skilled Belgium. Today, it is no easier in this friendly against Germany. Jurgen Klinsmann once lifted the World Cup trophy for his native country. Now as U.S. manager, he faces important roster and lineup decisions. Today against Germany, the U.S. must regain its confidence as it continues on the road to Brazil. Appropriately, no venue has hosted the U.S. men's national team and these fans more than RFK Stadium. And today at the centennial celebration of U.S. soccer, fans flock here to the stadium for the 22nd time to watch a friendly. The United States against Germany, it's billed as a friendly, but a lot to prove and on the line for the U.S. national team. And a happy Sunday, too, along with Casey Keller and Alexi Lalas. I'm Bob Lee. There's celebration, but there's anticipation of this match and some questions for the United States because in five days, it's back to the deadly serious business of trying to qualify in CONCACAF. Yeah, and right now, I think there's some questions of Jurgen Klinsmann. He's been paid a lot of money. And as a coach, yes, you're judged on your results, but you're also judged on your ability to adjust and fix problems. The U.S. against Belgium earlier in this week, they had major problems, major problems defensively. They're coming up against a Germany team that's going to provide some of those same problems, and, and they're going to have to deal with it. And how Jurgen Klinsmann comes out and fixes those defensive problems is going to go a long way into how we judge Jurgen Klinsmann. Yeah, it's really important. You come out of the last four points in the last two qualifying games, and you're saying to yourself, okay, it looks like we're moving in the right direction. Now you get a couple friendlies after that little bit of a break to get you ready for a super important three games. And the first game doesn't go so well and now you're coming up against the second ranked team in the world that came off a tremendous result of their own so there's uh, big tests being thrown out for the U.S. team and Jurgen Klinsmann today. Yeah it, it is as the Germans would call it a test spiel it's a friendly but as we said Friday with Jamaica it gets very serious back to the qualification and in the CONCACAF final group standings where the top three nations will go to Brazil the United States sitting rather well two of the next three qualifiers are at home but there are questions of plenty after what happened Wednesday night in Cleveland against a very strong and a very favored Belgian side problems on defense in the sixth minute Tim Howard forced to make that save and Kevin Morales putting it home and early on a 1-0 Belgian lead in the 23rd minute equalizing here Clint Dempsey's header Jeff Cameron's first goal for the national team and it was 1-1 but early in the second half again those defensive problems the back line misplay Christian Benteke is there to tap it in in front and Belgium takes a lead they would not give up and then Marianne Fellaini from Everton on the back post putting it home Benteke again in the 71st minute making it absolutely around and in the 80th minute Clint Dempsey with a penalty able to pull back one goal, but it was a thrashing was 4-2 and left more questions unanswered, certainly on the back line. This was the defense, Alexi, that was so lauded in principle and in practice with that point against Mexico back in March in Azteca. Yeah, but in Azteca, they were all pulled back defending. Now, Jurgen Klinsmann against Belgium had them playing a much higher line. And when you do that, you compact yourself and you theoretically have less space. The problem is you got to have coordination, you got to have communication, and you have to have pressure on the ball. This ball gets switched. Okay, but look at the flat back three in that case right there. And then no reaction at all. As I said, the coordination, communication has got to be there. This is ridiculous. Absolutely no pressure on the the ball that back four look at that back door thank you very much you're gonna get burned every single time that cannot happen today if there's not pressure on the ball and that back four sees it they need to be able to back up exactly you drop back to start with you keep people in front of you but then in the final third there's no such thing as zonal marking you have to have a man in that final third guys got caught ball watching guys were a little bit slow to react when things happen speed of play speed of thought it just wasn't there for the u.s against belgium well that match on wednesday in cleveland that loss in 4-2 was the final scoreline the most recent history for the u.s national team and for u.s soccer but this is as we've said the centennial weekend this match today against germany two years in the making 1913, the founding of the United States Fox Soccer Federation, certainly one of the highlights of that first century. The historic win, Villa Horizonte, Brazil, in 1950, 1-0 over England, the inventors, the founders of the sport. Then in 1990, the beginning of that sixth consecutive qualification World Cup streak for the U.S. men's team going to the 1990 World Cup and the dominance of the U.S. women's national team winning their second World Cup here on the States in 99 and just last summer 
in London, the 2012 Olympic gold medal. Last night, a chance at a gala for all the great names of the sport to gather and reflect upon what's been an amazing 20 years and really, upon reflection, a great century. Absolutely wonderful. And it deserves celebrating. Sometimes we don't yeah. think that there's a history. Right. There is an incredible history. And when you look back at the last 25 years, you know, sometimes we like to kick ourselves for what we haven't done. But that's just kind of an American trait. It's why we want to be number one, and it's great. Except you also have to pat yourself on the back for what's happened. You look back at the last 20 year, 25 years, absolutely incredible. Unprecedented when you talk about the progress on and off the field of a sport and when you put it up against other sports and leagues around the world. Well, and, and when you think you went 40 years before you qualified from the World Cup, you didn't have a professional league. The state of the game is very, very healthy right now. And, and what the Federation and what that generation of players were able to do, both on the male and the female side, to really lift this sport in this country has really been phenomenal in that time period. Well, that, of course, a look at the past, but Ian Dark looking to the future. These 90 minutes today, these three qualifiers this month, and perhaps some questions to be answered today against Germany. Yep, big questions, and it's going to be a furnace out there. About 90 <laughs> degrees, it'll be hard for the players. What was Jürgen Klinsmann going to do after the other night? Well, he's made four changes, and Taylor, one of them's quite a big surprise. Yeah, huge surprise. We're going to see Brad Evans at right back, and it's something that Jürgen Klinsmann realized in January, that his versatility and his soccer brains could help him make this change at the international level. It's one thing against Canada. It's another thing against Germany. He's going to be tested today. Jeff Cameron and Clarence Goodson have paid with their places after that defensive performance. But the real problem's up front. Josie Altidore, we hate to mention it, but nearly two years since he scored in open play for the USA. But Taylor, the supply lines could be better today. Yeah, I think two players are going to help him. One, Fabio Johnson, out wide left, where as of late he's been playing for Hoffenheim. He'll support Dempsey Zuzi in the final third. And over the last 12 to 14 months, we've realized the importance of that man right there, Michael Bradley. And everyone says it's his defensive responsibilities that help. I kind of disagree. I think it's offensively when he wins the ball, he finds Zuzi, he finds Fabian Johnson and Dempsey to then help support Josie Altador in that final third. A lot of talk about it being a depleted German team, and it is. The Bayern and Dortmund players aren't here, apart from uh, Sven Bender, who is in the starting lineup today. But there are some danger men there. Drax is supposed to be the next big thing. Podolski got a couple the other day. And this is supposed to be their B team, right? Yeah. I think the United States are going to have their hands full with these gentlemen. Per Mertesacker of that uh, starting 11, by the way, is the only one who played in their last World Cup qualifier. Yes, Germany are that strong. Yeah, and Alexi and Casey were talking about in the open. When you look at Podolski, Schürrle and Draxler, it's an identical game that we saw Wednesday night against Belgium. But now you add one of the best all time up front and close in. He's the subject of my Continental Tire Analyst Corner because two reasons. One, if he scores two goals today, guess what? He's all-time leading goal scorer for Germany, but it's more for the test for Matt Beisler, Omar Gonzalez. They had a young test against Lukaku, but now you go against one of the best for Germany all-time and one of the best all-time at making that run and challenging those two center backs. It's gonna be a tough task for Matt Beisler and the boys. And Miroslav Klose hasn't been in the Germany team since October. It's amazing. Would you believe he scored two, <laughs> by the way, that day as well. It's a tough, tough test here for the USA again today, Bob. Yeah, the phrase depleted German team is very, <laughs> very relative. Let's talk about Brad Evans at, at right back. And the phrase that Jurgen Klinsmann like, likes to use on occasion is throw my players into the cold water. Well, it's cold, it's deep today. It's freezing cold, uh, but it's a great opportunity for him. Sometimes it's not the best player. It's a player that recognizes and seizes the opportunity. So, Brad Evans. Jeff Cameron isn't really a, a, a right back, and he's playing right back, so he's out. Uh, Tim Chandler doesn't want to get on a plane, so he can't play right back. Steve Terundel is taking the summer off for physical reasons. This is a great opportunity. If he comes out here against Germany and holds his own, man, he, then he's got a future. Well, Brad Evans showed with the Seattle Sounders so far this season. I remember broadcasting, he played four different positions in four consecutive games for Seattle. He's a versatile player, and this is a huge opportunity to really stake his claim as a permanent member of this national team squad. You know, Jurgen Klinsmann says it's not really an emotional day for him coaching against Germany, perhaps just a little bit. Perhaps just a little bit we can get into the way back machine. Come on back to Park the Prince, 1998, Casey, and there he is in the second half. It's always the same for goalkeepers. You're always showing highlights of us getting scored on. Jurgen Klinsmann doing what he does best. The pressure from Thomas Dooley, unbelievable first touch, sets himself up in the perfect curl into the upper corner. 
that's why he was one of the best and why he was so popular for the German national team. 47 goals, and perhaps to be caught in short order in, in that place where he's with Rudy Fuller. World Cup champion, European champion, managing Germany to a third place finish, and now, of course, the U.S. manager. And speaking a few moments ago with our Monaco Gonzalez. A couple changes on the back line tonight. What are your expectations for Matt Beasler and Brad Evans? Well, I mean, Matt Beasley already proved it in Mexico in front of 100,000 at Steca Stadium that he can play on that level. And, uh, and this is an opportunity for Brad Evans. You know, usually he plays in the left or in right midfield in Seattle. But I had many talks with Sigi Schmidt about Brad. Um, and he has a tremendous potential. He's a very smart player. And he adjusts right away to whatever position you give him. And this is his opportunity. And, and there are more to come. So it's not down to only that game. Now, this is still a friendly game, even if it's a very special friendly game. And even if we want to badly win a friendly game but uh, we want to see some things towards the World Cup qualifiers and that's the last opportunity as I have. I know Jeff Cameron can always play that position. I know we can uh, uh, move somebody out else out there but I think Brad can play that and nothing better than Germany to test it with. Thank you coach. Bob back to you. A lot of familiarity that this is his coaching staff that is coaching Germany the one he put together and that's the team he's, he's facing today. Yeah exactly. I mean they, uh, there is some emotion. There's always emotions when you're playing against your old club your old team. He, in this case he's playing against the country that he had so much success for both as a player and a manager. Of course it'll be emotional but at the same time you always want to get one over on your old uh, employer every time. Emotion. It's a weekend of history. All right centennial weekend guys. We asked you to make a list to check it twice. Top three moments in your experience as a fan or as a player in World Cup history for the United States, in the United States soccer history. All right. 1994, U.S. win right. against Colombia. What it meant to, to me, I was on the field, but also what it meant to soccer during that summer and to beat a Colombia that a lot of people picked to go very, very far. It was the ultimate Cinderella game, a wonderful moment. 1999, we all remember Brandi Chastain and the U.S. women winning the World Cup. It wasn't because it was great for women's soccer. It wasn't great for soccer. It was great for sports. It transcended the game of soccer. That's my second. And my third right here, <laughs> Los Azero. You say that to any American soccer fan, they know exactly what you're talking about. 2 nothing win against Mexico in the World Cup. Dos Azero, thank you very much. I Gracias. Mean, you say it to any Mexican fan, <laughs> I think they understand even better. What it oh, means yeah. for that night. All oh, right, yeah. Casey, your top three. For me, it was a case of not the not the three best moments in U.S. soccer, but just kind of the three best kind of experiences that I had in U.S. soccer. For myself, not playing in MLS until the end of my career, playing with the national team was always a huge honor and one that I took big pride in. So my 100th cap just showing the longevity and the connection that I had. And everyone always talks to me about the game in 1998 against Brazil and what that meant you know when as a goalkeeper normally you have your best games you lose three nil but in that case we won the game and then in the world cup in 2006 getting a result against the future champions one one two players sent off and hanging on for dear life and keeping <laughs> us in the tournament and the atmosphere in Kaiserslautern that night was unbelievable i'm gonna i'm gonna stay in germany actually and start with my number one dresden two years ago, the quarterfinal. Today's Abby Wambach's birthday. Second from elimination. Most of the match down a player. Rapino's feet, Wambach's goal. Incredible drama. You will never have a, a better script. Then the soccer venue of Portland, 1997. Scoreless draw until Tab Ramos put in that against Costa Rica. What the din was at that moment. And the opening match of 1999. We didn't quite know what that event would be culturally. Mia Hamm most appropriately with the first goal. US 3, Denmark nil. A chance to go down. Well, hey, we had a hundred years to pick from and a lot to talk about. When we continue, we will have a live conversation right here with the gentleman who was on the field that day back in 1950 when the United States defeated England in the World Cup. What an incredible moment that was. What an incredible beacon of history in this weekend for the U.S. Soccer Centennial. A lot to reflect on. And all the tension score! Deflected in the middle, Donovan. Score! The volley! Yes! Benny with his jet! A sellout is expected today here at RFK Stadium as we said the 22nd time. The men's national team has played in this venue, and yes, old friends revisited players, the coaching staff. Friday evening, a chance for Jurgen Klinsmann to meet with Jurgi Löw, the current head manager of Germany and Oliver Bierhoff. And you want to talk history. 
We are joined now by a gentleman who was on the field in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, <laughs> Walter Barr, the day that the United Can't States... Walter, well, I know we, we're going to... Casey's going to relay the question. I'm going to relay quite the loud, but Okay. What does that win today mean for you, 63 is, years later? What does the win 63 years later mean to you today? I can, I can uh, put it under the category of ancient history. <laughs> <laughs> but we're ready for another victory. Are you... Are you amazed at the progress that U.S. soccer has made since that time in 1950? Listen, last night was the highlight of my uh, whole time in soccer. That was terrific. And I think the present group that's running soccer now and the administrators behind it deserve a medal. They've made more progress in the last 10 years than was made in the 90 years before that. Of course, they have a lot of other things to help them, but money being one. <laughs> Well, a lot of times we'll talk about that uh, nowadays the kids don't understand of how, how hard it was. But you were back at a time when things were even more different. Tell us a little bit about what it meant and day to day being a member of the national team back then. <laughs> I wish I was smarter to be able to answer that question. <laughs> they, uh, the prestige that went along with Olympic teams or World Cup teams or national team play was nothing like it is today. This was not a big thing. Maybe after the fact, we could stick our chest out and, and so forth, but whenever you went on the field, you say, hey, something can happen, we can win this. And if you're the favorite, you can say, hey, something can happen and we can lose that. And that's what happened with the English team. And um, I don't know how you can explain it. They deserve to win the game. We were lucky enough to steal it. Maybe we'll get another one, but we're getting closer to holding our own with all those top teams. Well, Bar, it is an honor to have you here. You're reaching out and touching history to shake hands with you. Best of luck and best of health to you, sir. Good to see you. Thank Centennial you weekend for U.S. soccer. Walter Barr on the pitch in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, 1950. Among the stars in the history of this sport and, of course, the latter generation. So many players to reflect upon. And I want to make it clear, we're about to put up an all-time modern era, U.S. men's national team era, selected by, and I'm going to put this disclaimer out there, our research department. So you guys, Alexi and Casey, hands off what your hands of all responsibility with some of these names that, of course, have helped to write the history of the United States in the modern era from 1994. forward. All right, guys. They got this guy Keller in goal. Wow. I mean, I think what was, what was, who do you choose from? From Friedel, Miola, Tim Howard. I mean, I'm honored to be in that position. It's, it's been a, a great competition for myself and for all the guys involved. And just a credit to the, the goalkeeping. Uh, one of these kids is not like the others here. That, uh, <laughs> you belong. You belong. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And a midfield of Ramos and Reyna when they were healthy and together in their prime. Incredible. And you saw up front. And, and, I mean, you could you could you could get a barroom argument that would have any of these guys. Oh, well, we will. The team is, and, and we're going to have call from Winalda, Mr. Agus, <laughs> Mr. Harks. They're all going to call Friedel. They're all going to call. <laughs> all <laughs> part of the history of the first 100 years of U.S. soccer. The second 100 years begins today. And again, this match has been two years in the making. The invitation to bring Germany over, have them play. Back in 1999 in Jacksonville, Florida. Germany lost to the U.S. by a score of 3-0. It's a different situation today. A strong German team, not their best, but among their best players are here today. And a lot to answer for the U.S., a day of history. Davies in, Davies shot, Davies goal! Rugby's going to hit one, oh, I say! Absolutely magnificent for Michael Bradley. Donovan goes alone and scores! Oh, what a goal! Landon Donovan, tremendous strike for the United States! What's the biggest number you can think of? A trillion, billion, zillion. That's pretty big. How about you? Ten. Okay. How about you? Infinity. Can you top that? Infinity and one. Actually, we are looking for infinity plus infinity. Sorry. What about infinity times infinity? Oh. It's not complicated. Bigger is better. And AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network.
We won. We won. <gasps> Is there a Century 21 agent in the house? Every time this team gets to... Stay calm. There's a Century 21 agent in the house. Smarter, bolder, faster. Oh, you're a lifesaver. The United States has won the Women's World Cup. It will never be forgotten. Every time this team gets together, it'll be like we're Olympic gold medalists. The U.S. has won the 1999 Women's World Cup. This is America's team. Redemption for the United States. They've come back to win the gold medal. Women's national team program didn't begin to the mid-1980s, and the legacy is unparalleled in the world. Here's the... Or even ESPN Research, the women's all-time starting 11. Hope Solo in the Nets, Kate Markrep, Joy Fawcett in the middle, Brandi Chastain, Christy Rampound. Look at that back line. You couldn't get through them. Oh, that's a good team. It's a good back line right there. And that's that's some serious attacking options. Look at that. Christine Lilly, Julie Foudy, Tiffany Milbert, Michelle Akers, who, what a skilled player she was. Of course she's a Seattle girl. Of course she is, Bob. Abby Wan back up front. A day of celebration. Many of the legends are here, and Mia Hamm a few moments ago speaking with our Monica Gonzalez. Mia, what has this cent centennial celebration for U.S. soccer made you reflect about your career and the advancement of women's soccer? I just think of how far we came and, and come. And, um, you know, from a paper team where we got together maybe once or twice in the, the mid to late 80s, uh, to now having a professional league for these women uh, playing in the biggest stadiums, having sold out venues, um, and more and more young girls getting the opportunity to kind of live out their dreams. And today, for after this game, the U.S. will be playing Canada, doubleheader. First time since that crazy game at the Olympics. How much has the growth of that rivalry changed the landscape for women's soccer? Well, I think it's it's huge, especially, you know, your next door neighbor to there's always been kind of this intense rivalry, but but Canada's gotten some recent results. And, and I think uh, today's match, it was sold out, I think, within a day, if even that long, a couple hours. Uh, so the U.S. is going to have a stern test today and they're going to have to play their best to uh, play a very good, inspired and committed Canadian team. Thanks for your time, Mia. Hey, Appreciate it. Back to you guys. Well, the U.S.-Canada match coming up after us this afternoon on ESPN News. If you're new to the game, new to the sport, twice World Cup champions, the U.S. women. Five times the Olympics have offered gold medals in women's soccer. Four times the United States winning. And go back to the final in Frankfurt two summers ago, which Japan won in the shootout. The most watched by a factor, guys, of 2-1. to one. The women outrated the men in the all-time ESPN television ratings category and twice as many U.S. registered players in this country as uh, than any other country of uh, women outnumbering the men. And just a walking, talking history book of this sport. There's Eric Winalda. Players coming out and being recognized. What a chance to sit. I mean, old war stories, certainly, but to reflect on, on the accomplishments and what these players have gone on to do in their lives. We await the appearance of the actual national team. Well, you know, Jurgen Klinsmann talking about today's match and getting his team ready is, again, it's a sellout. The outlaws on hand. So we showed tape to the players. We showed the defensive breakdowns. I showed them the videotape of what happened in Cleveland. But I also went back and showed them videotape of what they did well in Mexico. Object lesson bad, object lesson good. Yeah, and it's, it's a little apples and oranges, but you have to be positive. Playing differently, fun. though, right? Very, very differently. And I think when you're going out against this German team in a friendly, I, I think that Jurgen Klinsmann can afford to have his team go out there and try to play at least the, the way that he wants to play. Now, whether that can happen against a German You've been talking about this for months, I know. Well, I think he needs to, we talk about being proactive and attacking. Right. I think we need to see something against a very good team in terms of the way that they possess the ball. Michael Bradley coming back in, I think, is going to be huge for this team to have that rhythm and flow. Um, but they also have to press Germany because that's part of being proactive. And I talked earlier about how I'm going to be looking at this U.S. team 
on goal kicks. When Germany has a goal kick, are they pressed up and making them kick that long ball, which then posts other problems because you still got to win the ball in the air, but at least they're not playing out of the back and putting pressure consistently around the field on Germany. Look, every club team in the world wants to play like Barcelona. Every national team in the world wants to play like Brazil. It doesn't work that way. You have to work with what you have and play the way that your team can best get results. And I think that's what Jurgen Klinsmann really needs to find out. Can you play a possession type style game against this German team? Probably not. You got to battle, you got to fight, you got to earn everything you can get. Think about playing with what you've got. Let's check once again the lineups. If you've just joined us along the way during our pregame, the friendly with U.S. and Germany about to unfold here in front of a sellout. Tim Howard in goal and in central defense. Matt Beasler, Omo Gonzalez, and Brad Evans. A lot of attention on the Seattle Center who's playing it right back today. Yeah, exactly. Big, big test for Brad. He's going to have to settle down and get, get into the game real quick. Immediately, your eyes are drawn to yet. There's Miro Klose closing in on what the Germans thought for 39 years would be an unbreakable record of 68 career goals in the Deutsch shirt. I hope he breaks the record. I just hope it's not today. <laughs> it might happen, though, today. Paramerica soccer there as the United States team of makes their way out down this hallway that they've done 21 times before so many great moments and games that have been played Jermaine Jones who of course plays in the Bundesliga the number of German Americans and it's not just an emotional day for Jurgen Klinsmann let's, let's remember for someone like Jermaine Jones a chance to play for his his country of passport at least on the FIFA side yeah, and, and you like to think for those guys that had the opportunity maybe to play for Germany when they get out here okay they're playing against Germany but you like to think that when that whistle blows something inside them says you know what I made the right decision and I am happy to be wearing white today against this German team and I think that's the reaction that the American fans want to see that the, the teammates want to see they want to see these guys making a, a full commitment with the head and the heart that they're a part of this US team and what better way to prove that but against Germany and for this German squad today, it may it's not their B team, it's not their A team. We're going to call it their B plus team. You've got Klose out there, you've got Lucas Podolski, you've got uh, tremendous young players like Sidney Zahm, who had a goal in his debut the other day, and you've got Julian Draxler, the number eight for Germany, who has said, as Ian said earlier, the next big thing, a uh, place for Schalke, all playing to impress Yugi Love. The way he was speaking yesterday about Nero Klose in the press conference, he, he must has inked him into his 23 for next year, even when he'll be 35 next year. Well, sometimes in friendlies, it's difficult to play against that team that wants to prove itself to its manager. These guys are extremely motivated to try to make a World Cup roster. You got a bunch of the old veterans who are just kind of sitting back on iron. I don't want to get injured, but this is a dangerous German team and, and this team was a machine the other day against Ecuador we watched them at training yesterday I mean it was absolute precision in everything that they did it's a great test I know people have questioned if the U.S. should play a team like that coming up against a, a different type of competition in terms of CONCACAF but I think this makes them better I think that this makes them better even for the games coming up later in the week even if it's not them. technique you're just playing a very good international power it's going to put you on your game I still think that this makes them better it's almost as if when they go up against the CONCACAF teams now next week having faced the likes of Germany and Belgium there's this sense of okay but this is not Germany and Belgium and that confidence can be shown on the field when they go up uh, next week. Friday, the visit to Jamaica. Tuesday, the 11th of June, United States and Panama in Seattle. We will be there with full coverage and also on Tuesday, the 18th of June against Honduras out in Salt Lake City. Again, live coverage on ESPN. So the qualifications, two of the next three for the U.S. at home. It's all before them, sitting third in the table. And today, will the defense perform up to spec against Germany? Now, the National Anthems. Master Sergeant Bob McDonald.
whose blood stripes and bright stars through the perilous night for the ramparts we watch were so gallant streaming and the rockets went away the bombs bursting in air gave you the night and our flag was still there for save us that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. At the beginning of an important month for U.S. soccer with three qualifiers, Yes, it's a friendly, but yes, it could mean a lot and answer many questions. The USA and Germany, Ian and Taylor on the other side of the break.